fly I'm going to be tying for you is the double humpy. It was a pattern my father, Joe Allen, uh, developed in the winter of 1980-1981. He was a uh, production tire, produced about a thousand dozen flies in a, in a winter, uh, supplying shops in the Jackson Hole area as well as uh, flies for his own outfit. And uh, the story goes that that winter he had finished tying his, all the Joe's hoppers that he had orders for and switched all his material out to begin tying humpies. And switched out all the material except for the hook. He used a size, he still had a size 8 hook in the vise for a Joe's hopper. He began tying the uh, uh, humpy onto the hook. When he finished, he found that he still had at least half, half a hook shank left. Now, personally, I would have just taken that fly and threw it in the trash can and get started again. He saw something there, tied on a second body, and that was the creation of the double humpy. He used it uh, extensively uh, during his entire guiding career from about 1980-81 until he passed away in 2003. Um, and that's what I'm going to be tying to you today, for you today. I've got the uh, uh, flat wax nylon here. Uh, seems kind of a strange choice for a fly that's not going to be necessarily massive, uh, but uh, this is how the original was tied. It was tied with flat wax nylon. I'm going to um, use red. Red and yellow are my two favorite colors for this. The dreaded deer hair that everybody seems to hate. Um, I do fly tying instruction and this is the part of the course, intermediate course, that people hate the most. Because deer hair does take a little bit of getting used to. Um, to use. And not all deer hair is the same, even from different parts of the body. This fly is tied specifically with mule deer hair coming from the cheek, the neck, and a strip along the flank. It is um, very, very light hollow hair. Not very strong. Um, it does come apart after, you know, multiple, multiple strikes but it is super, super buoyant and that's very important for this fly and most flies in the Snake River area because of the turbulent waters that we, that we deal with. We get started basically with the tail. I'm going to trim off a piece of mule dare here. Here, We've got a bunch right about that size there. I drop that into my hair stacker, get that evened up. Get rid of some of the excess here. You can take a brush through if you wish, and uh, or a comb rather, and get all, all the sediments out of there. Particularly the fuzz and whatnot. But that's about what I'm going to be dealing with for my tail. Get rid of a little bit more. And we get started with the tail here. Get the butt sections tied down. And you don't have to cover up the butt sections because all of that's going to get covered by the thread that we use to tie the body. You're going to see the importance of using flat wax nylon for this fly because it we use a lot of thread for this. If you use six aught or you use monocord, you're going to need a lot more wraps of that, that type of thread to form the body. We'll get started with the first segment. It's a two segmented fly. Used a bigger clip of deer hair here this time. Trim that down. Get rid of a little bit more of it. We're going to 
And you see what that thread's doing? It's covering up all of that belly. And it would take a little bit longer, a lot more wraps with a different type of thread. And of course, it has that kind of neon shiny look to it. If you look under that fly, look at the belly, it's nothing but thread. Now, with that hair, I have it pinched. I'm now going to switch hands, pull it forward. And now you can see right there, I didn't go all the way back, did I? I want this to go all the way back to the tail. So let me lift it back up and bring the thread back right about to there. And again, covering up everything. And you'll see there's nothing but thread under there. Bring that thread forward to where you, the material ends. Then switch hands. Take a look at it. That's pretty much covered. I'm in good shape there. And what you're forming is a shell back body here. And you're doing it the same way you would do if you were doing a, a spun deer hair head. You go over once lightly, basically, give it a little bit of tension, and then the second one is when you really crank down on it, and the third one you crank down even more. That forms the first body the double harpy. Now, what a lot of people do is they'll separate these hairs out and form a split up wing, upright and divided wing. I'm going to use a clump style wing because that's how the original humpy was tied and how the original double humpy was tied. They were tied with just a clump wing, one wing that's going to stand up almost like a parachute post. And you won't really even be able to tell because the hackle material that we're going to use will cover uh, most of that up. You know, it'll be basically tucked in between uh, the hackle wraps. You're going to use grizzly hackle for this, just like on the original. Separate the fibers away from the uh, vein. I'm going to tie that in. We use so much hackle that it, for this fly that it really doesn't matter if you have the convex side facing forward, in other words, the dull side, or the concave side uh, facing forward, the shiny side. So that's in there, and now I begin to wrap the hackle. And I'm going to wrap it quite a bit. That's four times with two pieces of hackle behind the wing. That's four times with two pieces of hackle in front of the wing. So add that up. Is that 16 wraps, I think, total? If you just you're counting for one piece of hackle? I think it is. Cut that. And you're going to use this now, the rest of this hackle, for the next segment. And notice real fast, look at the hackle. See how it hangs past the point of the hook? That's a very common trait of a lot of flies developed in the Snake River drainage. Lots of hackle. And I'll explain why we do that uh, after I finish this fly. And bring the thread forward right about there. It's kind of a guesstimate. I've never had any type of specific uh, uh, space that I'm giving myself. Uh, it's just something that I eyeball. That right there is about what I'm going to be looking at. So I'm going to trim off another piece of mule deer hair here. Drop it into my stacker. And separate some of that, some of those fibers out, get it down to a decent size. And you're basically repeating the steps you use to form that 
last, that first uh, body segment. Okay, tie that in. And wrap that thread back to the base of the first body segment. And now wrap forward, covering up all the deer hair that's going to be used for the belly. Take a peek at it. Oh, almost covered. Let me get back up here. Cover that piece up. Voila. Bring it back a little bit more because I still got some hackle here that got mixed up with the thread. Okay, and that forms the body we want. Bring that forward. Now, pull that body forward. Now take a peek right here, and I didn't do this on purpose, but this happens when you're tying a whole bunch of double humpies. If you separate, it might be kind of hard to tell, but if you separate out that hackle material, you'll see there's a space right there. You don't necessarily want that. You could go ahead and unwrap that thread back and then pull, you know, wrap it back to the base again, or you can just take that body and push it back. One of our great tires in the Jackson Hole area is a gentleman named Howard Cole, and he has this very, very crystal clear rule. Don't ever take shit from your materials. That's basically what I'm doing. I'm not going to take anything from my material. I'm going to, I'm going to dictate how this fly is going to look. And so I just press that all the way back to that body. Now that space basically isn't there anymore. Now we'll get the hackle back in here. Again, splitting away some of the fibers. And getting the vein. Both veins. I tie it in right there, right behind the wing, pull the wing back, and then I secure those fibers again right there in front of the wing. I'm going to wrap my thread forward to just about where the eye is, and now I begin to wrap the hackle. That's four wrap ha wraps of hackle behind the wing. Bring it up forward. One, two, three, four wraps of hackle, two pieces in front of the wing. Make sure that's tight. I cover up to form that head, and you can whip finish it or half hitch it, whatever you choose. And that's how the original double humpy looked much more buggier than you see with many other uh, commercially produced double humpies. Look at that hackle. It's right below that eye of that hook. That helps that fly ride a bit higher. And uh, what that does is it creates a wake 
that is very, very similar when it's dragged or twitched through the water or just the currents moving it. It's a very, very similar wake to that of a stonefly, be it a golden stone, a clasinia, a salmon fly. That hackle is very, very important with that. Recently, within the past 10 years, much to my father's chagrin, I've been tying legs onto uh, double humpies. I've been creating foam double humpies with legs as well. Uh, maybe they look a little bit more uh, imitative, but those legs really do kind of get in the way of that wake. So that hackle is very, very important. How much you use and where it's sitting. And that's the double humpy.